Ready to blow your mind once again? Assume you have a hemisphere, which is a sphere cut in half like this. Now, can you tell me what will be the volume of this hemisphere, assuming it has a radius r units? You might laugh at this question and say, that's super easy. Volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 times pi r cube. So if the hemisphere is a sphere cut in half, then its volume will be simply half of this, or 2 over 3 times pi r cube, right? But now, what if I say that you need to prove how we arrived at this value? Then this problem becomes a bit challenging, and this is where double or triple integral comes into the picture. In my previous video on integration, I have already established the fact that integration is a useful tool to find the area under a curve between points A and B, which is given by some function f of x. So, using this analogy, double integral, which is shown like this, is a tool to find the volume under a surface, which is given by some function f of x, y, which is not only dependent on x, but also on y value. Okay, we will try to avoid as many jargons as possible. Let us understand it with a simple example. Assume we consider a hemisphere where the center of this hemisphere is at origin. Now, if you remember, for single integration, we divide the curve into small slices of rectangle, and then we find the area of each small slice, and then add them up. Here also we will consider that this hemisphere is made up of a collection of disks of very small thickness, like this. For example, let us consider a hemisphere of radius 2 units. Now assume we approximate this hemisphere as a collection of 10 such small, evenly placed disks. Then the thickness of each disk will be 2 over 10 or 0 0.2, right? This is because we have 10 disks and the radius of the hemisphere is 2 units. Now consider this disk. What will be its volume? It will be the area of the base of this disk times this thickness or height, which is 0 0.2, right? and the area of its base is easy to calculate. Radius of this hemisphere is 2 units. So, so what will be its area? It will be pi times r square, or pi times 2 square, or 4 pi, isn't it? Therefore, the volume of this disk will be equal to 4 pi times 0 0.2 or 0 0.8 pi, right? Now consider this second disk. What will be its volume? Again, it will be the area of the base of this disk times this thickness, or height, which is 0 0.2, right? Now, to find the area of this disk, we need to find its radius, which we can clearly see is not equal to the radius of the hemisphere. But no worries, we can easily find its radius using Pythagoras' theorem. Consider this right triangle. This length, or the hypotenuse of this triangle, is the same as the radius of this hemisphere. Now this length is the same as 0 0.2, or the sum of the thickness of all the disks below this disk. Let this radius be r. So we will get r square, or 2 square, equals 0.2 square, plus small r square. This gives small r square equals 3.96. So the area of its base will be 3.96 pi, and the volume will be this times 0 0.2, or 0.792 pi. Great! Now consider this second disk. What will be its volume? First find the area of this disk. Consider this right triangle. This length, or the hypotenuse of this triangle, is the same as the radius of this hemisphere. Now this length is the same as 0 0.2 plus. This is also 0 0.2 or the sum of the thickness of all the disks below this disk, which is 0 0.4. Now, let this radius be r. So, we will get r square, or 2 square, equals 0.4 square, plus small r square. This gives small r square equals 3.84. So, the area of its base will be 3.84 pi, and the volume will be this times 0 0.2, or 0.768 pi. This way we can keep doing the same for all other disks and find their volume. 
I have created a table showing the square of the radius of all the disk, and in this column we have the volume. If we sum the volume of all of these disks, we get 5.72 pi. Now we know the actual volume of the disk is this, so substitute r to get 2 over 3 times 2 cube times pi, or 5.33 pi. Okay, we can see that our crude approximation of using only 10 disks gives us I would not say a good approximation, but not very bad as well. I have made a graph where the x-axis shows the logarithm of the number of disks with base 10, so as to scale the axis properly, and the y-axis shows the estimated volume. We can clearly see that as we increase the number of disks, the estimated volume converges to the actual value of the volume of the hemisphere. Now to generalize this, Consider this as our axis direction, where this is the x-axis, then this is the y-axis, and this is z-axis. Next, consider a small disk, which is at a height z, which means this is z, and consider it has a very small thickness, which we will label as dz, which shows this thickness is very, very small, almost close to zero. So. If the radius of this disk is small r, then small r square equals big R square minus z square, right? Therefore, the area of this disk will be pi times small r square, or this. And thus, the volume of this small disk will be this area times dz. Now we will sum all these volumes where our z will go from 0 to r, which is the radius of this hemisphere. This will give us our actual volume. But hold on, when we deal with such small thickness, we replace the summation sign with this S looking sign, which we call as integration, right? So this will show the volume of this hemisphere in a more general form. But hey, this is not a double integral, and the video topic is about double integral. So here comes level three of representing the same problem. Everything is fine till this point where we consider a small disk which is at a height z, and consider it has a very small thickness which we will label as dz, which shows this thickness is very, very small, almost close to zero. So if the radius of this disk is small r, then small r square equals big R square minus z square. Everything is fine till this point. Now we need to find the area of this base. For a moment, erase from your memory that the area of a circle is pi r square. Now look at this disk from this perspective. We have a circle of radius small r. We know that the equation of this circle will be given as x square plus y square equals r square, right? From this equation, we express y in terms of x like this. Now divide this circle into many small rectangular strips like this, such that each strip has a width of dx. Now consider a strip like this at a distance x from the center. So this point will be y, and therefore this height equals y, and therefore this total height equals 2 times y. So the area of this rectangle will be width times height, or 2y times dx, right? Therefore, the total area of this circle will be sum of all these small rectangular areas, or this. But we replace summation with integral for small areas, and also we substitute y as this. Now our x goes from x equals minus r to plus r, and thus the area of this circle can be given using this definite integral. Now we have already seen that the volume of the disk will be area of the base, or this times dz. Also, the total volume of the hemisphere equals to the sum of all these small disks, which means it will be integral of this. And this integral from z equals 0 to r. So put the area as this integral and also substitute this small r as big R and z to get this, and there we go. We have expressed the volume of this hemisphere as a double integral. And this is what double integral is all about. It is a tool to find the volume under a surface. Now you may think, 
Why did we calculate the area of the circle using the integral method and make our life more difficult instead of simply using pi r square? This is because, unfortunately, life is not that easy. We are calculating the volume of the most perfect 3D object, which is a sphere. But in case of some random shaped 2D surface or a 3D object, we will not get the area simply as a good-looking formula and thus we will have to find its area using integration only. So this is where double integral comes into the picture. Now, this double integral might look daunting, but it is not that difficult. It's simply a matter of doing innermost integrals first and then moving outwards. For that, we can use parentheses to illustrate this more concretely. So, for this case, we can do dx integral first by treating z as a constant here which will give us a function dependent only on z, and then solve for this dz integral. Also, the order of integration does not matter as long as we keep track of which variable has which bounds. So we can also rewrite this double integral like this. See the bounds changed. This is because now the x goes from minus r to r in this circle. And for a fixed x, our z will go from zero to this. Therefore, the given integral can be equivalently rewritten as this, and both of them will give 2 over 3 pi r cube as the final answer. Okay, now can you tell me in the comments what will be the double integral expression for the volume of a cylinder of length L and radius r? Also, if this video gets 10,000 likes, then I will make more exciting integral videos like this one. So good!